Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed for what is, is it my first or my second view of 2019? Yeah, I suppose it doesn't really matter. What does matter is the fact that I've just had loads and loads of fun making this video. Um, yeah, hopefully the video is more enjoyable than uh, what went into making it. But anyway, for this video, I've just spent tons and tons and tons of time going over completed eBay listings. So, uh, graphics cards that sold in December of 2018. I looked at uh, roughly 60 different graphics cards or uh, 60 different GPU classes and then a whole heap of graphics cards within each class. So yeah, basically, uh, short story, I've looked over thousands upon thousands of used graphics cards on eBay. The reason I've done this is not because I enjoy torturing myself, but it is to provide you guys with what I'm hoping will be the ultimate uh, used graphics card guide going into 2019. So at least for the start of 2019 anyway, if I work up the courage, I might do it uh, again halfway through the year. Anyway, this video should provide you with all the facts and figures you could possibly need to snag a secondhand graphics card at the right price. And I've gone, I suppose, that extra mile by working out how good your chances are of finding a particular model at what should be a reasonable price. So that way you should know where to invest your time, what models are worth looking into, and what aren't. So all the pricing figures are based on what I found on ebay.com, so the US version of the website, looking at sold auctions in December 2018. I've tallied up all the sales and will be presenting that data as an average sale price and using that data again to compare against the performance numbers I have to calculate the cost per frame. For testing frame rate performance, I've used games that have proven to be a fairly neutral and by that I mean don't favor one particular brand of GPUs. I've done this by taking one of my big 30 plus game benchmarks. I've looked at titles where the GTX 1060 and RX 580 along with the GTX 1070 and Vega 56 delivered a similar level of performance. This led me to choose Battlefield 1, F1 2017 and Rise of the Tomb Raider, all of which were tested using the DirectX 11 API with the medium quality preset enabled at 1080p. Frame rates for all the graphics cards were higher in Battlefield 1 and F1 2017, while they were about 35% lower in Tomb Raider, so this caused some issues with the lower end models. Still, I feel this is a good spread of what you can expect from modern games are using mild quality settings. So here is a look at the data for the GeForce GPUs. The GTX 560 and 560Ti were basically unable to play these modern tiles at 1080p, while at the opposite end of the scale we have the GTX 1080Ti, miles out in front as it's roughly equivalent to the new RTX 2080. Using the medium quality preset in the three titles tested, we saw for around 60 FPS on average, gamers can get away with either a GTX 950, 760, 1050, 960, 670, or obviously anything that was higher up on the graph. For the Radeon GPUs, we see that Vega 56 and 64 were well out in front, while the previous generation Fury GPUs were only just able to edge out the RX 580. We see strong performance from the R9 290, 390 and RX 570, as well as anything obviously situated above them on the graph. For around 60 FPS, the HD 7870 or Refresh 270X will work, while the HD 7950, R9 280, 380 and anything faster on the graph will be more than adequate while using these mid-range quality settings. Lumping them all together, we get this super big graph, which I will provide over on our Patreon page for free. So if you wish to take a closer look, then you can do via the link in the video description. Anyway, for the first time, I'm trying this stretched out scrolling type graph in our videos. And I think for this kind of content, this is probably fine. Uh, not much we really need to discuss here anyway. Uh, this is really just for reference. A quick and easy way for you to get a rough idea of how a certain model or even models stack up. Okay, so there's all the performance numbers, and I'd say that's somewhat useful information uh, just by itself, as it does allow you to quickly determine uh, what's still worth buying. Anyway, now that we've got all that, uh, it's time to see what each model sold for uh, on average in December, and how many sold at auction. And then we'll compare uh, that information with the performance information, and that will give us price versus performance, or cost per frame. For this, I have another big scrolling graph, but before we start moving down to check out all the models, uh, let's just go over a few things. So obviously to the left, we have the GPU model, and at the top, you can see the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti, as it is the fastest, and all the data is arranged by the average frame rate. 
Next to the GPU model name, we have the average selling price in December. In the case of the GTX 1082i, that price is $618 US. Then in the darker gray field, we have another number, and this number represents the number of successful auctions, ignoring any defective products being sold as parts. So again, in the case of the 1080Ti, we see that there were 715 secondhand models sold last month. So your chances of snagging one for around the average selling price is very good. At $618 US, the 1080Ti can be had at a cost of $2.32 per frame based on the data from our three game average. That actually makes it one of the more expensive models in terms of cost per frame, but it's also by far the fastest, so that premium is often justified by gamers. With RTX 2080 models selling for around the $700 US MSRP, you really want to spend under $600 on a used 1080 Ti. There are quite a few models for around $550, and I even saw one that sold for as low as $415 US, so there are some nice bargains to be had. Still, it's shocking how many sold for close or even over $700 US last month. It's very odd, that one. Anyway, for those of you wondering, at $415, which was the cheapest price I saw one sell for last month, the GTX 1080Ti comes out at a cost of $1.56 per frame, and then $2 per frame at $150. So feel free to make your own calculations based on pricing in your region. For those after a high-end bargain, the GTX 1080 is worth looking into. Uh, the 1070 Ti's are arguably better value, but in December, there were many more 1080s on sale. The average selling price was $372, but quite a few sold for much closer to $300. Even at the average selling price, the 1080 comes out at a cost of just $1.84 per frame, and that's very good relative to other high-end GPUs, again, especially given how many of them were on sale. Still, for those after an affordable 1440p experience, getting a secondhand GTX 1070 or Vega 56 graphics card probably is the way to go. That said, your chances of landing a GeForce card are almost seven times better. The 980 Ti also looks to be great value, though there weren't that many of them on sale, about the same amount that we saw for Vega 56. For over 100 FPS in our three game average, uh, the ultimate bang for your buck really is the R9 290 at just 74 cents per frame and an average sale price of just $78. It really is an incredible bargain. Sadly, most of the models I saw that were successfully sold uh, did use the extremely loud AMD reference design, but still, for $78, you could probably make do. That said though, for a very, very small price increase, the RX 570 is a better buy, and there were loads more of them on sale as well, making them a much easier product to pick up. $94 on average, it's a little over $50 off from a brand new model, which isn't bad, it's a 37% discount. I should also jump back a bit and mention that the R9 Fury is also excellent value at $130, the only issue being that very few of them went up for sale. Looking at the 67 to 88 FPS range, the GTX 770, uh, R9 285 and GTX 670 are standout options. However, having said that, there were basically no 285s on sale, so you can probably ignore those. The GTX 670 sold for $66 on average, but honestly, I'd avoid those as well and go for the GTX 770 for a few more dollars. From the 50 to 60 FPS range, standouts include the R7 265, 270, HD 7870, and R9 270X. We can scratch the 265 off since just a single model was sold. I'd also avoid the 270 since the 7870 and 270X were better in terms of a cost per frame and were only a few dollars more overall. So I'd recommend you look out for either of those models. Below 50 FPS, uh, you've got to be desperate if I'm honest. I mean, the HD 7870 and 270X sold on average for just $51. In fact, there really isn't anything lower that makes sense. The GTX 750Ti, for example, sold for $9 more on average, and it's much slower, so really no point getting one of those. So to recap, these are the models I'd be on the lookout for. But of course, you can pay attention to other models if they provide the level of performance you want, because, well, there's often bargains to be had, like the $415 GTX 1080 Ti. But based on what I was mostly seeing, you have a good chance of getting one of these models for around the average selling price, if not better. Basically, I removed anything that typically offered a poor cost per frame ratio, or there were less than 20 models sold last month. Well, that should point you in the right direction for buying a used graphics card. There certainly are loads of options, but I think we have narrowed it down uh, to some of the better options out there, and not just the better options, but also those that are, are more easily acquired. So uh, models that you have a good chance of buying 
at a reasonable price. And just as a side note, uh, quite a few of these graphics cards do come with various VRAM configurations. Take the RX 570, for example, you can get that in four or eight gigabyte uh, capacities. And often on the used market, I was noticing that the they kind of carry the same sort of prices. You're not really paying much of a premium for the bigger uh, VRAM cards. So yeah, keep an eye on that. If there is a big premium for any particular model you're looking at, then yeah, you, you decide which one you should get. But I found with the 570s, often it was only 10 to $20 more for the eight gigabyte model. And sometimes the eight gigabyte models were selling for less than the four gigabyte models. I mean, that's the very nature of auctions, I guess. So be aware of what the VRAM options are and yeah, keep an eye on those with uh, bigger, beefier capacities because they might be worth investing in. Uh, speaking of which, I would probably recommend avoiding cards with only two gigabytes of VRAM. You can get by with those kinds of cards by uh, lowering things like the resolution, texture settings, all that sort of stuff. But yeah, if you don't want to compromise on those things, because textures really can impact how a game looks, then I would recommend getting at least four gigabytes of VRAM for those of you that are gaming at 1080p. Anyway, that is going to do it for this one. I hope you found this video useful because yeah, it was loads of work and it was very tedious. And if I'm honest, it really wasn't a whole lot of fun. Not like those big benchmark sessions, but yeah, it was, it was kind of interesting doing it, uh, but yeah, just not, yeah, not a whole lot of fun. So anyway, I did it because I'm hoping it will really help those of you who are looking to buy a used graphics card and get your hands on one for the right price. So yeah, speaking of which, if you have bought a used graphics card and you've used this guide, then let us know below what you were able to snag and for how much and all that sort of stuff. Cause yeah, that'd be, that'd be really cool to hear. And yeah, just the usual stuff to wrap this up. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like button for us, subscribe for more content just like this. And if you would like to support our work more directly, then consider supporting us on Patreon. That will uh, grant you access to our monthly live stream and our private Discord chat. So that's kind of cool. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.